Hello everyone, it's me Halise endeavoring to persevere as always back with another Monday motivation for you So I had said a couple weeks ago when I did my how I build my pitch video that I would show you How to actually open up a template and walk through it. So it's gonna be a little bit long uh, Check back in, you know work your way through it because it's gonna be a little more informal We're just kind of hanging out and I'm just kind of showing you some stuff and I'm actually gonna use, I have a, actually have a, a, a presentation tomorrow that I need to do for Adobe. And so I actually built a whole new um, pitch deck and I built one for that. And so I'm gonna show you what that looks like now. Here's what that looks like. We're gonna go ahead and hop to my screen. So this is a presentation that, you know, there's no NDA stuff in this, but this is a presentation that I'm gonna do tomorrow, uh, present to the Adobe team. And I'm going to kind of show you how I built this from a template. I'm not going to show you play by play the whole thing, but just to give you an idea of what the InDesign interface looks like, how to navigate it and do very simple things like create boxes, adjust your text, add in different assets, things like that. Um, this is, this is what this video will be about. So yeah, here we go. And I actually, so this template, by the way, is actually a template that um, I got from Adobe Stock, again. Um, it is this one. I will link to it in the description box if you wanna check it out, but you can see it's a really minimalist, easy, breezy template. I, I generally like this kind of design. I'm very minimal with my stuff, so. I thought this was cool. And I'm gonna show you just, I'm gonna use this as a way to show you the interface of InDesign. We're not gonna go over everything InDesign can do, but just the tools I think you'd probably need to do things in InDesign like mess with a template. And then I'll also show you how to um, export out your design to, um, InDesign creates this feature where you can actually have it be a web page. Uh, and I just think that's really neat because then you can just have it be a web page and you can present and all of that. Like you can go full screen with it and everything. So yeah, and then you can do things like have GIFs in it and stuff too for your presentation. So it's like taking PowerPoint to the next level, which I think is really cool. Check back in on this video at your leisure, get through it in your own time because I think this will be a bit of a long Monday motivation, but wanted to follow through on my promise to show you how to just work within a template. So before we even get into the template, like before we even really do anything, I want to make sure it's known that when you're working in a template, the big thing you wanna do is organize everything. I said this before in the original video, but I really do mean it. Go find all the assets you're gonna to want to have in your template and put them in a localized space. So for me with this one, I created a folder on my Dropbox and I called it, I think I have a folder in my Dropbox called Pitch Decks because I have to build so many these days. And I called it Adobe Presentation. And then in it, as you can see, I have three folders. So I have the assets. These are all the images and things like that that I went and found for it. Um, and then I have the template itself so clean template with nothing done to it, just so I always have it. And then I create a folder called versions. And as you can see, I've already created two different versions of this template um, based on just things I know, you know, when I create a new version and I sent it for review by my manager and then she was like, maybe change these things and then save again version two. So I think this is a good root way to organize your root folder. I think it's really important. Um, now, before and now once you've done that you've organized everything you want and it looks great you like it now let's actually open the template so with this specific template here's what it looks like and if your layout of InDesign looks way different than mine that's fine um, head up to the top right hand corner and hit the essential the um, layouts tab um, right now mine says essentials yours might say something else but just change it to essentials and then if it still doesn't look like this then hit reset essentials and that resets the layout of the workspace for you and so you can see here is the template and you see all these gray bounding boxes essentially of where you can put stuff 
you know, in the original um, template, it showed you an actual something or another done. But this now, since it's, you know, you're here working on it, it's just leaving blank boxes for you to work in. So this template's pretty well organized. I actually really like it. Let's like look at the interface a little bit. So right now on the right side, you can see the different properties window over here. If you tab over pages, this is literally like a table of contents for the document itself. So you can double click and it'll take you to different pages of the document. Remember in design, for the most part, I would say is considered a way to design print things. So like magazines, brochures, stuff like that. But um, as they keep getting, as the app keeps changing, evolving, you know, you can start to do more, you know, digital print kind of stuff with it, which I think is really cool and how I like to use it. So if you double, double click, it'll jump you to different sections. The other thing you can do is you can rearrange these pages however you want by simply click holding and dragging to where you want them to go. So I just moved that one up, command Z to move it back to where it was. You can also duplicate spreads. So pages here are generally called spreads. So if I wanted to duplicate this page, I would say duplicate spread. And it's generally gonna drop a new one down to the bottom, but then you would drag it to wherever you want it to go. Command Z, get rid of that. Um, I'm not really gonna get into this up here, but with some templates, uh, they have things that'll be constantly fixed to the pages uh, as like design elements, and it becomes part of like a master design that is built into the template. Um, that's what this kind of stuff up here is for. For the sake of just messing around in the template, don't worry about it. And then similar, if you're familiar with other apps in Adobe, um, all of your tools are over here to the right. I'm actually gonna move mine to the top here uh, because my camera is right in, on the corner of my screen here. And so I can't really see them. So I'm gonna move them up here just so I can see them for the sake of this video and just have them stick there. So, all right, so that's sort of a quick run and gun. Here's the interface, right, of um, InDesign. Now, let's kind of, oh, one other thing I wanna make sure y'all know about are layers. So in this essential layout, you don't usually see your layers tab, but I think it's important to know where that is, even though you may or may not need it with messing with templates, at least the way I do, I usually don't need it, but sometimes I kinda do. So I wanna show you where it is. Go up to the top, window, again, similar to Premiere or other editing software, window, and you can see all the different windows that are available hit layers and it should come up. And so layers are basically when you're in a specific spread, layers are what that's like the assets that make up the spread and that's how you can see them. So if I see if I toggle, you can see what each thing is. Um, and so that's layers. Again, you may or may not use it, you know? And then links is another thing. Again, if you make this an interactive PDF, um, or you make this, you know, like I said, how mine lived on a web browser, then you can have, you can click on certain things and it'll actually take you to a web page or whatever, similar to a hot link like in Word or something like that. So you can do that in here as well. All right, so let's like go through and try to like make mine. So I have mine open here as you can see. Uh, Let's go through and try to replicate one or two of my pages in the template so you can see how I did that. So first things first, most of the time we're gonna be using our selection tool for things. We're not really gonna worry about most of the other stuff here because it's just kind of not necessary. Um, so if I just click here, you see I can now easily click and highlight the text and maybe I wanna change it to something like Halis Narvaez change it to my name. Now you see when I did that, it automatically, like there isn't enough room in this bounding box for it. That's fine. Make sure your um, selection tool is clicked and then just drag it out. And you can see it waits for there to be, ooh, I don't know how to spell my own name though. Yeah, a easy. I was like, ooh, you ever see something you kind of forget what it is? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm sleepy. Anyway, <laughs> that's my name, don't wear it out. Um, but yeah, so you see, here's my name. I've just 
you know, typed it out. And all I had to do was stretch out my text bounding box to make it work. And then I can easily just click and drag and change the position. As you can see, when I move it a certain way, uh, the grid lines start to click on and work. If your grid lines aren't popping up for you, I believe you can go to, let me see, grid probably, grids and guides, where to go. Yeah, so you can go to grids and guides and as you can see, you can hit the snap to guides, smart guides, just turn all that on if it's not on for you. And that's how you can see that. It's really helpful when you're just trying to like line stuff up and make sure it looks really snazzy. Um, so again, with my first page, I didn't have anything at all. So we're gonna just actually make sure our selection tool is highlighted and then see that it's now turned into a bounding box. I'm just gonna hit the delete key to get rid of that. Now this gray square, these gray squares with the blue lines, these are something that are used specifically within templates a lot within design. And if you were trying to design something for a magazine, you would have these bounding boxes because you'd maybe not be sure what you're gonna put there yet, but you wanna you know, keep the framing a certain way. So that's how you know that these are meant to be replaced with whatever imagery you wanna replace them with. They'll have these gray lines because they're not actually like boxes boxes they're just the called the rectangle frame tool and that's up here um, use the f key for it and again it's a way for you to show where you're going to potentially place something later um, and that's why they're there so let's go ahead and actually replace this gray um, uh, rectangle frame let's go ahead and replace it with my image so to do that I'm gonna switch over to the properties tab and then with my gray box selected I'm gonna hit import file and then from there I'm gonna make my way to my assets again that I've already collected and put in a specific place so that way things are easy to find and then I think I used this one it's the one yeah without stumble well on it I'm gonna hit open and there it is. Now you'll notice between this one and the other one, I'm a little too big. You see that? I'm a little too big in between the two. So what I wanna do now is I wanna reframe this to be right. And this is something that'll happen quite a bit. So I'm gonna hit command and the minus keys just to zoom out a little more for y'all. Yeah, like right there. Command minus command plus is how you zoom in and out on most Adobe software. <laughs> um, I guess control minus and plus if you're on a PC. But I want to move this. So you see when I added this, one, there's a link here. So you can see that Adobe knows this is where she pulled this thing. It was from that root folder. That's how we've linked this image. So this image isn't actually saved in here now. It is just being pathed into it, if that makes sense. Now, if I click on this little circle, you can see if I hold, click and hold, you see where the full frame of the image is. But again, it's only relegating it to the bounding box that was created. So I can literally grab, hold, and move it and frame it how I want to frame it in the box. Now, I think that looks pretty good, but you'll remember on my original one, I actually have it to where, you know, this image is quite bigger than the page. So I'm actually going to say, like, I wanna see the whole thing. I wanna see more of the image. So I'm gonna move it back down. And then what I'm gonna do, instead of clicking and holding, I'm just gonna click once. And when I do that, it brings the actual dimensions of the image within the bounding box. And now I'm just going to hover over a corner and I'm also gonna hold the shift key. So that way it keeps its dimensions and then I'm going to reframe it. And you know, I'm keep moving, again, holding shift so it keeps the right dimensions. It doesn't get askew, you know? And I'm gonna get it to about, you know, right there. It doesn't need to be exact. I just wanted to see more of me. <laughs> um, and that looks pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. So there, now that more or less is the front page. The other thing I want to do is I want to get rid of these accent colors. I just did, I felt like they were taking too much space up, not interested. So I literally just click on them with my selection tool activated, click on them, hit the delete key. They're gone. Booyah. Very simple. So this is my front page. I like it. 
looks good. Now let's say I wanted to change how this bounding box actually was shaped itself. Not necessarily my image, but the bounding box itself. The way I would do that is one, this is how I do it, which is probably not the best way, but I would move my image down a little bit so I can make sure I'm actually clicking on the bounding box. And then I would adjust the bounding box's parameters how I want. So maybe I do want it to be like that, you know, and have this, you know, be more of a four by four by five kind of situation. And then I want to move my whole bounding box like over and then put, you know, my name and stuff here. Let's actually do that. Let's just do this right now. So I'm going to switch to my type tool, make a box here. All right. And then I'm going to type police, not advice. It looks super small right now, but don't worry about it. And then I'm going to highlight my type. And now it's like mess with some text. So with my text highlighted here, I am going to go and make this like exponentially bigger, obviously, like 48 or something. I don't know, maybe bigger. Yeah, let's go like 60. And then let's make it bold. And let's also make it, do they have an all caps button in this app? They don't. I don't think they do. All right, so let's just retype it to be all caps. All right. And so you see, just like that really easily, I've, sh I've changed what the front page looks like. You know what I mean? Um, I can reshape my bounding box here for the text. And then maybe I want it to be a little more centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight it. And right now it's set to justified. I'm going to make it centered. Come back up to my selection tool. And for whatever reason, it's not putting up a grid for when I'm like in the center of these two, but we're, we're gonna guesstimate. So maybe we have that, and maybe right here I would put like digital storyteller, video producer, blah, 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 something like that, you know, thank you for attending. But you know, that's how easy you can like recreate what your bounding box is. Or maybe I just wanna have a little accent. So I literally, I'm gonna copy this box right here. Copy, Command K, or Command C, click in the atmosphere up here, activate this page, Command V. That's cute, I don't hate that, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna change it to be my blue. So I'm just coming over here to the one I've already built and you see this is the blue I use. This is like the Halise blue for my brand. And then I'm gonna go to the fill, keep clicking until I get to the color picker and that's my actual color value. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy it and then hit OK. I'm gonna come back to mine. Again, make sure that square is highlighted. Command V to paste it. Boom, you know, like we've got a pretty decent little situation right here. And then maybe I would put some stuff here about like what I do. So you see how I just took very easily, I just took the idea of this template and made a new front page, very simply. Um, so now let's like replicate my second page, which is this one. So you saw there that it's that simple to change the colors of things. So this box is here. We're gonna just click to change the color of it to my color. Again, you would pick whatever color is right for you. This is, again, with the grays, this is not a bounding box because there's no blue. Uh, squares like there is with this one. This one is meant to be replaced with some sort of imagery. That's that's the goal that they're trying to help you out with with this one. But with this one, it, this is literally just there as an accent color. I don't like the color, so I want to change it to my gold. And I'm going to just go find it again. Instead of having to figure out what the value was, I'm just pulling it from my other one for ease. But with it, make, it, make sure to click to highlight it and then come to fill and then Boom. Now here is where I wanna add, oh wait, let me change this one real quick. Before we do that, let me change that little green guy. Copy. There, and then we had a little green guy in the corner here. Click on it till it appears. Boom, perf. All right. So here I wanna again try to add something. With this one I wanna add a GIF though. 
Now, you create GIFs on your own. Um, you can actually create GIFs using Encoder. While Encoder is loading, you can create <clears throat> GIFs in Encoder really easily. Um, all you need to do is, is pull whatever footage you want to turn into a GIF, like figure it out, figure out what footage you want. And then literally just go in and let's see here. So let's take this. This was my final headshot. And you can see it's an MP4. This is a video. I want to turn this into a GIF. All I'm going to do is drop it into encoder, like so. And you can see it's put some um, export settings out. Without teaching you too much about encoder, if you don't already know about it, um, just type in here and you're going to go GIF. And you'll see a preset comes up for animated GIF match source. I'm going to go and drop that on there. And then you can mess with a few settings if you want, like if you want. But if any of this is like freaking you out, the big thing is the quality. Um, if you're gonna, if you know you're gonna put this like on a phone, then maybe drop the quality down to like 60% or something like that. And then also I would say change like the overall size of it to be a little more manageable. So maybe like 800, but keep your, um, keep it linked so that way it stays proportionate. Figure out where you're gonna save it, and then hit OK, and then render. Boom, all right. So it's now on the desktop, I will show it to you. And there it is. I just made a GIF super easily. So that's like a quick way to make a GIF if you wanna use them in your presentations. So with this one, I'm gonna add my GIF. And so since I'm putting in a GIF rather than an image, I'm gonna to go to File and I'm gonna to go to Place. And I'm ducking down because I'm trying to see it. Again, I'm recording so my um, screen is in the way. There we go. Place, shortcut is Command D. <laughs> And then I'm gonna navigate to the GIF I want to put there. And I think with this one, I literally just turned my opener into a GIF, yeah. So here's my opener, GIFified, if you will. And I'm going to replace selected item, boom. Now you'll see the GIF isn't playing natively in InDesign. I like the way this is framed, more or less. I like where it is in the bounding box. I'm gonna adjust it just like a little bit, but I more or less like that. Now let's like fix my text here. I think I had put my name before. I do not know how to spell my own name right now. So weird. Perf. And then let's like adjust this out. Let's put it up here. I don't know if I like this being left aligned actually. I think I wanna just have it be, yeah, centered, which I like. And then I think what I put before. So you see this, this template is really based on having your template be for like an actual pitch deck where people would take the time to read this on their own. But you know, I'm making a pitch deck that I'm actually like presenting. So I actually really want it to be more like a PowerPoint than like a pitch pitch where I'm putting a lot of text. So with this one, you know, it's designed for a lot of text. So I'm really gonna have to like adjust a lot of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and type what I wanna type to put there. So digital storyteller and video producer currently based in San Antonio, Texas. So really simple sentence, but obviously not fitting well. So we're highlighting all of it, make it 36 maybe. Mm, yes, let's go 36. Um, I'm gonna change it to what my, my font, a lot of my videos all have the same font, Saravic. And we'll go bold. Yeah, we'll go bold on that. And you can see it's center justified, which looks weird. So we're gonna make it just, or it was justified and I'm gonna change it to center aligned. And then you also see it's kind of like overlapping itself right now. So I'm gonna change this to match 36. And I actually think I wanna make it a little bit bigger. I still feel like it's still kind of small. Cause remember, I'm gonna be like sharing my screen. There we go. And so I want it to feel like people aren't squinting to read it. And now I'm going to adjust it a little bit, you know, drag. And this is where, you know, we start to get into preferences of how you like to design things and what looks aesthetically pleasing to you and all of that. And you can see I'm kind of snapping to the grid lines. I figured I'd make this bounding box the same length as my name bounding box, you know. 
maybe I'll bring this up so it's actually a little closer to it and right on the edge of it. Do I like that? No, I don't like that. Command Z, undo. I like it right there. All right. Same thing with here. I think in this, in my other one, I put that, you know, where I went to school, graduated from the University of Texas at Austin, hook em horns and other such things. And with a BS in radio, television, film. And then I think I also put started stumble well, a full service creative production company in 2018. So, you know, two simple sentences, hard to read. So again, same thing. We're gonna go Avenir on this one. All right, Avenir on that. And then we're gonna go probably heavy. No, we're not gonna go heavy. We're gonna go like black. Let's go black on that. We're gonna go left aligned, I guess. Mm, center aligned, feels better. And then we are going to make this bigger. That feels good. And now I need to, you see it's the text is gone and you just adjust the text box a little bit. So they're both there. And then I'm gonna double click cause I think I want space in between the two of them. Go back to my selection tool so I can mess with the sizing again a little bit more. I think I want this to actually be the same size as my GIF. Yeah, that just feels better. <clears throat> and now finally, I'm gonna change the color. I'm gonna come to the appearance and hit the fill. Change it to paper, which is just another word for white. <laughs> I think it's like a little bit of an off-white, but white. And there we go. We more or less now have recreated my, yeah, my page. I added my StumbleWell logo in this one. We can do that here too if you want. Let's do it real quick. So let's see. I want to add the StumbleWell logo. The way I would do that is I would go to File. Again, sorry, I'm having to look for stuff. Place. And then Let's see, where is my StumbleWell logo? So this is a bad example because as you can see, my StumbleWell logo isn't in my assets. So boo on me for messing that up, but do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> um, okay, but I actually keep the StumbleWell logo always on the computer, so that's why I was like, eh, I know where that is. All right, PNGs, here we go. So here's one. Okay, so you see now, since nothing was highlighted where I wanted to put it, it just has it ready. And it's just has it ready. So now I'm going to actually click and drag where I want it to go. And voila, it's there. And so that's another way you can add other assets in. If like if the template you're using doesn't have its own bounding box there or a way for you to add something, you can just place it there yourself. And again, you know, it creates its own bounding box for it. So you see how I clicked here and just moved it and like the bounding box didn't move too. So that's something else to keep in mind. It is doing the bounding box for you and it's placing the image or asset there for you as well. So we've more or less recreated this one. I think it looks pretty good. Now let's create, we're gonna do one more page and then that'll be kind of the, the wrap to this because after that, it's all pretty much the same. So let's recreate the trying to be somebody, a video podcast page. Um, because as you can see, the next page technically here is this one, which we're not using. So we're gonna go to pages. And again, I really, there were certain pages in here I knew I really liked and I knew I would just use and replicate and I wouldn't really use the rest of them. So I believe the trying to be somebody page is a rip of, yeah, is like, is a version of this one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right click on this, duplicate spread, it's gonna drop it to the bottom, and then I'm gonna drag it all the way up to where I want to be, right behind my second page. And so now it's there, great. And now it's literally the same thing again, like we're gonna change our colors and add things in. So I want this to be, what did I do in this one? I want it, oh, I even changed the size of that box, right. So let's change the size of this box. Literally just clicking and dragging. 
And you'll notice how like I'm not reinventing the wheel, but by just simply changing things a little bit, I'm making this template my own. You know, I'm making it look just a little bit different. But I'm also, I'm making it unique enough, but I'm not having to do as much work. I didn't have to think about like, okay, what, how should I do this? How should I design it? Like the, the hard lifting is done with the template and I'm just copying and pasting, moving things around to serve the information that I wanna present. And that's really the value of a template, you know? Um, unless you're a design person, you know, I just really don't think it's, it makes sense to waste time designing something, unless doing the design itself is its own form of an example for you, you know? So as you can see, I'm not really talking through it because I'm just doing it now, but you know, change this, trying to be somebody, and then a video podcast. And again, you see none of it's there, that's fine. It typed it all. I'm gonna scoot this up, stretch it out. There it is. Bada bing, bada boom. And then I'm gonna move this up. I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out because I know I want it to be um, longer. Ta-da. And I probably want it to go down to there just for the sake of, well, do I want it to be that long? Let's have it there because I don't know if I want it to bleed into that so much. All right, so you can get rid of that. And then let's add some bullet points. So you can add bulleting and numbering to your stuff as well here. It just, you, you just need to hit this um, little bulleted list icon. It won't appear at first until you start typing. So trying to be somebody, let me write some stuff. Um, candid conversations with, I think I put mostly, <laughs> BIPOC artists and creatives about their career. Um, a different perspective for those trying to become a full-time artist. I'm just kind of putting stuff just to put stuff, but y'all know what trying to be somebody is about. Y'all know. <laughs> um, all right, so then we're going to highlight it all, adjust the text. Let's see, cervic. No, for my body stuff, I want body yaddy yaddy like that. And then we're going to change this to like 30. Mm, make it bigger. That feels better. Readable? Is that big enough? That feels better. All right, 48. And then we're gonna change this to 48 too. And I want there to be more space in between these for like readability. So I'm just gonna hit the um, enter key. But you see that when I did that, it added another bullet and I don't want a bullet there. That's fine. Just gonna keep my cursor there. Unclick the bullet icon. Boom, it's gone. Super simple. I, f I really feel like InDesign is very intuitive. Once you kind of like mess around with it, it becomes very intuitive. So now we're gonna add our GIF here. Again, file, place, <laughs> sorry, y'all are right in front of it so I can't see. Or Command D is the shortcut. And I, you see I have it highlighted and now I'm gonna go find it where it is. Um, assets, I think it's over here. Yes, this is the right folder. All right, so I need to find the Temi asset. I think I called it like podcast. Yeah, podcast GIF. All right, so there it is. Open. Ta-da. And then I forgot. Yeah, so the bounding box was a little too tall for this GIF because if you click, you can see it's more wide than the bounding box. So I'm going to adjust the bounding box because I don't want that gray to be there when I sort of publish this, right? So that's actually how I'm gonna make it. And then keeping that in mind, I think what I wanna do is now actually stretch out the bounding box to actually line up all the way with, that, with my blue box. And now I wanna design this to actually be right aligned with it too. And just click away to see what that looks like. Actually, I like that. I don't hate that. That, that looks pretty good. So let's see, what did we originally have? More or less the same thing. I switched it up a bit, changed the colors because why not? <laughs> but as you can see, this is really straightforward. If I wanted to keep going, I would just keep doing the same thing. I wanna add boxes, really easy. Just copy and paste the box, you know? 
Um, I want to put in different assets, really easy, just add them in. That's why I really love working from a template because again, you're not having to waste time trying to figure out the design, you're just doing stuff. You're just making sure the presentation looks good. So I just wanted to walk you through those three pages. Now, obviously all of these are here still. So, ooh, pretend I said this in the beginning. As you go through and build, save as to not be your template because obvious reasons. You, wanna, you always wanna have your template to come back to so that way if you lose one of the design pages, you have it still. So I'm gonna save as on this and I'm gonna save it literally again in my temp, no, in my versions. And I'm gonna save this one to be um, Patreon example V1. All right, and so now I haven't saved over the original template and if I want, I can go and open the template. So if I want, I can now open the template again. So see, I have it here. And say I mess up on mine, this example that we've been working on. Say I actually messed up this front design. And I was like, crap, I didn't want this to happen. And I want to actually get back to what it was before. I messed this up. As y'all can see, I completely changed this, right? And I actually want to get back to the original template design. So I can click on the now template that I have opened as another project, right? Go to that page, right click, and move page. And I can move one page, okay? I can move it to InDesign example. Do not delete the pages after moving. Keep it there and then hit OK. And then when I click over, let's see if it's there. Oh, where'd it go? Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. All right, so that's why you wanna like save as, as soon as you open the template, save as, and then open it again in another way. So that way you can always have, you can reference like the actual template itself and build on if you mess up or something happens. So I just wanted to show you all that real quick because I think that's really great. I'm gonna delete that now because I don't need it in here. Because the other thing, as you move forward, obviously you're gonna delete all of these because they won't be part of your overall design. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna delete all these and I'm not stressed about it. Why? Because I have the template saved. So delete spreads. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, so this is our simplified quick document, right? Great. Now I wanna show you how to export this as a like digital page, a digital web page. So that way you can see the GIFs. So I'm gonna go up to the share button and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to publish online. And that's going to, everything's going to my other screen, but that's gonna bring up this, which is the publish online document you know, page. So we're gonna cre create a new document for this one the other thing you can do is as you inevitably make changes to your stuff, you can just update an existing document you have and it'll like let you know which ones you're trying to update, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to call this Patreon example. Okay. Um, you could do all the pages or arrange. Obviously, I'm just doing all because this is very simple. You can allow viewers to download the document or, or you can hide the share and embed options if you don't want them to. I'm gonna hide just because I don't want that. <laughs> um, and then we're just gonna hit publish. It's now uploading the document. And again, this is gonna just create a web page for you. Um, it might take a second, especially because I added the GIFs in. Uh, if you're just using images and stuff like that, it probably won't take nearly as long. But I know with mine, it does take a while because I'm doing GIFs. Awesome. And once it's complete, it's complete. You can share it on different socials if you want, and then you can also have your direct link. So copy, got the direct link. Let's open up Safari again. So remember, this was the original one I showed you when I started off. And here it is. And so now, again, you, so our StumbleWell logo is a little blurred, a little blurry, we can fix that. Um, but you see, it works. The whole thing works super easy. I will say with GIFs, remember to, if you are gonna use these in a presentation, uh, remember to like 
load the browser and have it running for a while so that way it loads all the gifts in and everything and it doesn't make you look unprofessional and you're a thingamabob when you present but this is like pretty much it and again you can go full screen on this and it can be straight up your presentation um and i really like this for for indesign i think this is such a neat feature to have just just nicer looking presentations instead of like PowerPoint or um, Google Slides, you know, just like just a little bit more. So check it out. Again, I just really wanted to get in here and kind of show y'all what's possible with InDesign when you're working from a template and give you like a really high level overview of how to navigate um, InDesign. Just get in there and play with it, you know, that's the big thing. Again, I make these Monday motivations for y'all to check in with you and just give you a little bit of extra content. So if you have any further questions about this, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Um, but hopefully, again, this gave you just like kind of a long-winded but overview of what you can do in InDesign. And I'll see y'all next week. Bye.